What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to create a finished render for my model in under a half hour. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I wanted to give this a try based on a post that was up on Lumion's website in their blog talking about how you can go from just a 3D model to a render in under a half hour. So I thought I'd go through and just kind of follow the steps that they've given us and see what I end up with. So I'm interested to see how this goes. I wanted to take just kind of a random 3D warehouse model and see what I could do with it. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download a um, 3D model from the 3D warehouse within SketchUp and uh, then we're going to export that into Lumion. So to start off what we're going to do is we're just going to download a model. And in my case I've gone into the 3D warehouse, so um, window 3D warehouse, and the model I've downloaded is this Asian contemporary model. Um, so it's the Asian Contemporary Modern Resort Clubhouse with landscape accessories, sliding windows, and timber deck. So it's kind of a long name, but um, very descriptive. And uh, it's from Fu Guang Li. So you can go onto the 3D warehouse and download this model yourself as well. And so I'm a little interested to see how this goes because this, uh, this model, I really like the model, but it does have some interesting things going on with like the geometry below grade and things like that. So figuring out how that's gonna work is gonna be kind of interesting. But let's go ahead and um, start off by just exporting this into Lumion. So what we're gonna do in order to do that is we're gonna activate Live Sync. And if you remember, Lumion Live Sync is the link between Lumion and SketchUp, so making it so any changes you make are live changes. So we're going to start off and we're just going to click on the button for Live Sync. And uh, this is going to ask me to save my project first, so we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so once we have that saved, we're just going to click the play button. It's going to ask if we want to start Lumion. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And so what that's going to do is that's going to open up Lumion in the background. Alright, and so the first thing we're going to do when we do this is we're going to select the kind of background that we have in here. And generally speaking, I usually pick either the plain or the mountain range. Um, just uh, to give me something kind of simple, I like the mountain range because it gives me some mountains in the background. So I don't have just this like flat horizon line going on back here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our model using Live Sync. And so once we've set this, what this is going to do is this is going to bring our model in. So this is going to bring in our model into Lumion. And the first thing you're going to notice is right now, and I can't really fly down through this, but the first thing you're going to notice is that this is brought in um, a little low. So what we need to do is we need to bring this up a little bit. And so you can either just come over here and click on this and drag, or what I like to do um, in Lumion 9 at least is come down and find the move up. And what that's going to do is that's going to let me drag this up. Um, until everything's kind of out of the ground right here. And so you're going to notice we've got a few things going on over here that we're going to work with in a little bit. Um, and the other option that we might have here is we may not want this to be above ground. What we may want to do instead is we may want to take the uh, we may want to take the Lumion terrain and kind of match that up with this view. But we've gone ahead and brought this in and so now what we can do is we can start making changes within Lumion. So we've brought this building in and so now I'm going to make a few quick changes to make sure that my landscape and everything else is kind of lining up with this. And so to start off, what I want to do is I want to go around and I just want to kind of change the terrain so that it actually lines up with uh, what I've got going on with the terrain right here. So I'm just going to go into the landscape tools and uh, I'm just going to use the tools in order to kind of bring this up so that it runs into my terrain. Um, you can see how I'm just doing that kind of gently in here. I want this to kind of run into my terrain. So this looks like kind of a rolling hill. Um, so you can't really see the intersection or you can't really see any gaps between what I've brought in here. And I may increase my brush size a little bit. And all I'm trying to do out here is I'm just trying to take away that kind of jagged edge where the imported terrain runs into the rest of this. And you might come back in here and work with this a little bit with some flattening and things like that. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much because the view that I wanna create is gonna be from this other side over here. So I'm gonna try to make sure that this all lines up. And so I've got this landscape kind of brought in and one thing I'm noticing in here is that uh, this wall looks really weird because it's got kind of a gap 
running around the outside right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into SketchUp and I'm going to extend that wall down. And then uh, we'll watch what happens with Live Sync enabled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into SketchUp. And um, one thing I usually turn off is the camera synchronization because that really seems to slow everything down. Um, but all I want to do is I just want to come in here and I want to take this wall which looks like it's just drawn as a plane right now which is a little bit annoying but that can be what you can get when uh when you're dealing with 3d warehouse models but i'm just going to drag this wall down until it kind of goes through the ground level right here um, so that i don't have so that I don't have a giant gap right here. And you might consider doing that same thing over here um, if you want to. I'm Most of my view is gonna be from this front side, so I'm just gonna kinda leave it as is. So now if I go back into Lumion, what you're gonna notice, yeah, I probably need to go ahead and extend that wall down. So I'm just gonna go in, and in this case, I'm actually gonna push pull this wall out um, just cause it's a little bit easier. So one thing I might do is I might take my water and make it all like a single group. Then I can actually come in here and edit this without my water moving with my wall. So I'm just gonna take this and just move it down so that it's down below the ground, just like that. It doesn't look like it negatively affected anything else, so we should be in good shape. So now if we go back into Lumion, you can see how we've got this wall kind of running into this little lake that we have right here. And one other thing we might wanna think about is we might wanna think about coming around with a uh, with a material, so like a rock material or something like that. Just kind of around the perimeter of this. And just adding more of a rock material in here because you're not gonna have grass down around the outside of your lake. It's gonna be more like rocks and stuff like that. So you can just come in here and you can just paint this whole thing. And uh, when you're inside like this, you may wanna think about just uh, turning up your brush speed and maybe your brush size. That way when you click in here, you can see how that gets a lot easier. To do. So and you may wanna think about adding just a bit of different rock types in here and doing some other stuff like that. But just so that you don't have the grass sitting below the grade like that. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we start wanna start adjusting our materials. So um, to do that, we're gonna go into the material editor and we're just gonna start swapping out materials for um, the things that we really want in here. So like for example, for this, I would want some kind of a grass material. So probably one of these 3D grass materials, maybe like the clean cut grass or something like that. Um, just something that's in here that's a little bit more realistic. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in and we're gonna swap out some of these SketchUp materials for other materials. So like this material too, which I wish this wasn't applied to this as well. We could go back and fix that in SketchUp if we wanted to. But I'm gonna come in here and for this wall, we're gonna make this maybe something like this brick wall material. For the deck, we could come in here and we could swap this for one of the polygon wood materials or something like that. So and this is one thing you need to be aware of when you're working in SketchUp is you're gonna notice that this material too has been applied to pretty much everything, which we don't really want. So you may have to go back in SketchUp if you're just taking this out of like the 3D warehouse or something like that. And adjust those materials manually. And honestly, what's gonna be a little bit easier for me right here um, is I'm probably gonna come in here and find my grass material and put it in a group just so I don't accidentally select some of that. And I'm actually gonna start deleting these objects out because um, I'm gonna replace them with Lumion objects anyway. So we may as well come in here and just delete them out. And that may solve some of our problems. Uh, 
with this material too as well. But one thing I might do is I might come in here with this face and just apply a different material inside of SketchUp because then I can swap that out for something else inside of Lumion. So like for now, we'll just make this like a red color or something like that. And you can see how you have to come in here with a lot of these models and do a bunch of grouping and fixing of things. So, and all I'm doing is painting these out because I'm going to replace them inside of Lumion with a Lumion material. So, and if this was a model I'd created myself, I probably would have set it up a little bit differently. And uh, you might not have to do this, but when we download stuff in the 3D warehouse, you kind of get what you get. So, but the nice thing about this is when you're using Live Sync, if you go back into Lumion, every time you make this change, or when you make a change, that gets brought into SketchUp really easily. So like for this one, for example, we'd probably put like a tile material. And so a lot of the time what you'll end up doing is just removing things out. Um, if you download from the 3D warehouse, obviously if you're setting this up for Lumion from the beginning, you're not going to have to worry about that. But things like these trees, they're not necessarily what I want. So, um, but, but again, since this is a live sync, situation as I make these changes they get made in here as well so I'll make a couple more quick material changes maybe like a plaster material on this wall for the glass material we'll make sure we'll have one of these pure glass materials and maybe like a nice wood paneling or something like that on the outside so now the next step here is what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to add um, trees in the background using the uh, using the mass placement tool. So what we need to do is we need to add some trees to make this look a little bit more um, realistic. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and save our changes to our material. Whoops. And we're just going to go into our object mode and we're going to click on nature. And we're going to click on the button for place. And the first thing we want to do is we want to go down and select the option for mass placement. And so mass placement is going to allow us to add multiple different kinds of trees at the same time. So like in this case, maybe let's say that we're going to bring in like some bigger fir trees or something like that. And so what this is going to allow us to do, and I'll kind of rotate up so you can see what I'm doing here is this is going to let us place multiple different trees in here just by clicking so you can see how what we can do is we can adjust the number of items in here as well as kind of randomizing the direction and the spacing and also how far they're offset off the line so you can see how these trees are coming in here and um, you're able to add a whole bunch of context models in here really quickly. So you could do that right around the edge right here. Go ahead and click OK. Add a few more along this edge. And click Confirm. Then add some more across this edge. And obviously that's adding too many trees, so you can adjust the number of trees and the spacing and everything like that as well. So that's just kind of going to randomize all of this inside your model. And so you can see how what you have now is you have trees in the background that were really easy to add. And the next thing the next thing that's recommended is doing some cluster placement of some different objects. So cluster placement just drops a cluster of a single object in here. So like for example, cluster placement is going to let me drop a bunch of small trees right here and you need to be a little bit careful with the placement because obviously you don't want um, trees on your roof but you can use this to kind of randomize the way that this landscape looks so that it's not just a bunch of trees that are all exactly the same size and so then the other thing you can do is you can also use the cluster placement and you may have to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup. But you can use that to kind of drop that in here. Then the other thing you could do is, let's say you wanted some rocks in here. You could use the nature function. And uh, so what you could do here is set up your cluster placement to add some rocks along the edge here. So you could do that right here. 
you could do that right here and you could kind of turn your offset down a little bit if you wanted to and really what you're going for is you're going for kind of a random nature feel inside your rendering and then the last thing you might do is you might want to come in here and add um, some furniture and things like that, kind of some context models um, to go in here. So in order to do that, you just come in here and you just find, a lot of them are found, you can look in the outdoor in order to find some outdoor furniture. So let's say for example that you wanted to add maybe some deck chairs. You could use the mass placement tool for that as well just by clicking along here and you can set the direction so you can add some deck chairs right here maybe you have a lot of parties or something you could add some more deck chairs right here and kind of adjust how the spacing looks so we could also set some individual umbrellas here or something like that. So all we're trying to do here is just add some context to this model of what this might look like. And uh, then from here, I think we've got this pretty well detailed out. I think we're ready to at least give it a try to render it. So in order to do that, we're going to go over into photo mode. And if you remember what we've looked at, what you can do here is you can just come in here and you can start off by using one of Lumion's built-in styles. And so in order to use one of the built-in styles, all we're gonna do, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, but you can see I've got the nice background and everything else, is we're just gonna click on custom style and uh, you can really select any of these. I'm gonna go ahead and select the option for realistic. So we're gonna take that realistic style and uh, we're just gonna add that in here. and so we're at about 26 minutes from when we started looking at my timer over here. And probably the one effect that I want to change is I want to go in and I want to adjust and add one of my real skies. And so you can see how what the real skies do, do is they really kind of add um, detailed shadows and make everything look really nice inside of your model. Um, so you can select really any of these skies that you want depending on the look you're going for. So I like this one because it just gives me kind of a realistic sun and some really interesting shadows and so you can take this maybe move your camera up a little bit um, just so you get a view of the mountain in the background and what we're going to do is we're just going to go in we're going to click the button for render photo and so when I render photo I'm just going to render this to my desktop or to a desktop resolution and we'll just call this house exterior and we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this render And so if you take a look at this, this actually gives you a really good exterior rendering. And uh, you can't see it right now, but I'm sitting right at 28 minutes. So it's definitely possible to bring in a model, even one that you haven't created, and create a good looking render within 30 minutes. So this is one of the things I really like about Lumion is this is a good looking rendering, especially if you're working with a client or something like that. I was able to take a model that I didn't even make that had a bunch of modeling mistakes and things like that, or maybe some practices that weren't the best. And uh, you're still able to generate a good looking render like this in uh, less than a half hour. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you find this helpful at all? Was this, uh, would you like to see more videos like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.